the James Webb spacecraft might have found the very first stars in the universe. What do these pictures of the universe, galaxies, nebulae, and stars tell us though, since the James Webb telescope has been operating? Have we made any recent discoveries? Are significant discoveries imminent? Let's find out. The Sparkler Galaxy was the first discovery. A glittering faraway galaxy encircled by dense clusters that may house some of the universe's first stars was the focus of the James Webb Space Telescope's first image of high scientific grade. The James Webb Space Telescope's first deep field image featured an astonishing collection of galaxies and galactic clusters that warped as a result of gravitational lensing. Albert Einstein's general theory of relativity made the first prediction about gravitational lensing in 1915, and since then, it has helped astronomers observe the universe more effectively. According to general relativity, massive things bend spacetime. Imagine putting massed balls on a stretched rubber sheet. The bigger the mass, the more curvature there would be in the rubber sheet. When light from far off, brilliant objects bends around a large object like a galaxy or galaxy cluster that is situated between the emitting and receiving object, gravitational lensing results. In other words, gravitational lensing intensifies the light from far off objects, allowing us to see very far off objects even though they are very far away. The Sparkler Galaxy is a galaxy 9 billion light-years from Earth that has been the subject of research by a group of Canadian astronomers because the compact objects that surround it appear as tiny, vivid yellow-red specks. The Sparkler Galaxy's peculiar, stretched shape is a result of the gravitational lens. Many nearby clusters can be seen at various locations in the JWST deep field image due to the same event. The nearby objects that gave rise to the moniker are of great scientific significance since they might be the farthest globular star clusters that astronomers have yet discovered. Globular clusters are groups of old stars from the early days of a galaxy, therefore they might hold information on the beginnings of galactic formation, expansion, and history. On the one hand, we have the James Webb Deep Field, and in the center, in the center left section, you can see a galaxy warped by a gravitational lens, but around it are 12 unexplained dots. This is the team's discovery. The 12 spots surrounding the galaxy sparkler cannot be seen with the Hubble telescope, but they can be viewed with the James Webb. The Canadian Nairus Unbiased Cluster Survey Team discovered that five of the 12 compact objects that encircle the Sparkler Galaxy are globular clusters. These globular clusters may also be among the earliest ever observed, possibly existing at the moment the universe first started to produce stars. Before James Webb, it was difficult to date the initial stars in early distant galaxies using such far-off globular clusters. As a result, the scientific community has made a novel and fascinating finding. There are around 150 globular clusters in the Milky Way, but their ages are still unknown. The majority of objects in our galaxy can be roughly dated, but this is not true for really ancient objects, which already appear ancient when viewed up close. This is because these items have been existing for a very long time and we don't know how they were in the past. Other distant clusters, like the Sparkler Galaxy, are much simpler to date since they can be seen as they were 9 billion years ago, when the cluster was much younger and the universe was just 4.5 billion years old. Are these stars the first to emerge in the cosmos as we know it? It would be premature to say that we have found the oldest stars in the cosmos yet. For the time being, all that is left to do is to continue examining the photographs that James Webb has provided. IC 5332, Spiral Galaxy, is the second discovery. This is the Spiral Galaxy IC 5332. The views on the left and right are from the Hubble and James Webb Space Telescopes, respectively. The photographs, especially when their data are combined, demonstrate the potent capabilities offered by both of the world's best space telescopes. With a diameter of roughly 66,000 light-years and a distance from Earth of more than 29 million light-years, the galaxy IC 5332 is one-third smaller than the Milky Way. 
It stands out because it almost precisely faces Earth, allowing us to marvel at the symmetrical movement of its spiral arms. Using his MIRI, or mid-infrared instrument, James Webb studied this galaxy. The first device to reliably produce mid-infrared images as sharp as Hubble's at shorter wavelengths is this one. Here, a stunning ultraviolet and visible light image of the same galaxy made from data gathered by Hubble's wide-field camera is shown next to this lavishly detailed mid-infrared image. Some significant variations are instantly seen when comparing the two photos. Whereas the web image displays a continuous tangle of structures that mimic the geometry of the spiral arms, the Hubble image displays dark areas that appear to divide the spiral arms. The existence of dusty patches in the galaxy is what causes this discrepancy. Infrared radiation is far less probable than ultraviolet and visible light to be dispersed by interstellar dust. Since most of the ultraviolet and visible light from the galaxy has been unable to pass through these regions, dusty regions may be easily seen in the Hubble image as the darkest ones. Yet, because the galaxy's mid-infrared light has been able to travel through them, those same dusty regions are no longer dark in Webb's image. Because some stars shine brighter in the ultraviolet, visible, and infrared spectrums, respectively, it is possible to see different stars in the two photos. Each image provides us with more information about the architecture and makeup of IC5332, and they work in remarkable harmony together. It is astounding how drastically different the same galaxy appears when viewed through the two telescopes. When comparing them, it appears as though we are viewing two entirely distinct objects. Can you imagine what we can see when we look at the entire universe if this can be done by looking merely at a galaxy? Collaboration between James Webb and Hubble for the DART mission. Recently, NASA used the DART mission to conduct an experiment to deflect an asteroid. The two most potent telescopes at the time, Hubble and James Webb, were put to the test by NASA scientists and engineers. For the first time, Webb and Hubble were employed to study the same astronomical target concurrently, yielding original photographs from NASA's Double Asteroid Redirection Test DART, project. In the Didymos Double Asteroid System, on September 27, 2022, at 1.14 Central European Summer Time, DART purposefully collided with the asteroid Dimorphos's tiny moon. It was the first time an asteroid has ever been deflected by altering its orbit via kinetic impact by a spacecraft. According to measurements, DART, a test to protect the Earth from the potential risks of asteroids or comets, has been an unparalleled success. For every telescope, the observations represent more than a key operational milestone. By combining the capabilities of these observatories, scientists can investigate important scientific problems about the makeup and development of our solar system. Scientists will be able to learn more about Dimorpho's surface, how much material was ejected by the collision, and how quickly it was ejected thanks to the Webb and Hubble studies. The particle size distribution in the expanding dust cloud will also be revealed by examining the collision over a broad wavelength range between Webb and Hubble, which will help determine whether it ejected predominantly small material or many huge chunks of dust. The combination of these data will enable scientists to better comprehend how an asteroid's orbit can be altered by a kinetic collision. Observation with James Webb prior to the collision, Webb spotted the impact position and made more observations during the following few hours. A tight, compact core is visible in images taken by Webb's near-infrared camera, NIR cam, with material plumes appearing as scrolls traveling away from the collision site. The asteroid's rapid ascent through the sky posed particular difficulties for the flight operations, planning, and science teams as they attempted to see the impact with James Webb. Fortunately, all went according to plan. Teams worked in the weeks prior to the impact to enable and test a way of tracking asteroids moving more than three times faster than the initial speed restriction established for Webb. Over the course of five hours, Webb saw the impact and took ten pictures. Observation with Hubble Hubble was able to record images of the tiny moon prior to the collision and again 15 minutes after DART hit Dimorpho's surface. 
Hubble's wide field camera of three captured images that demonstrate the impact in visible light. The impact's ejecta are visible as rays radiating from the asteroid's core. DART collided with the flared ejection peak to the left of the asteroid. Astronomers need to study closer to figure out what this might indicate because some of the rays seem to be slightly bent. Astronomers believe that Didymos' brightness increased threefold in the Hubble photos after impact, and they are particularly interested in how that brightness stayed constant even eight hours later. Over the following three weeks, Hubble will check on Dimorphos ten more times. These repeated, rather long-term observations will provide a complete picture of the ejection cloud's expansion from ejection to disappearance as it grows and shrinks over time. The size of the particles that each telescope could detect can be observed as a minor difference when comparing the images produced by the two telescopes. James Webb's photos have a greater amount of material than Hubble's because he is more adept at detecting tiny particles. The fact that the dark collision on the asteroid produced a tail that resembled a comet and extended for more than 10,000 kilometers also fascinates astronomers. This is because all the dust that was released during the impact formed a tail of materials. Nobody anticipated this, therefore the asteroid's impact with DART did more harm than anyone thought it would. Fortunately, we know that the asteroid Dimorphos won't hurt the planet because it's being held in place by the gravity of its parent asteroid Didymos, so there's no need to be concerned. As we can see, the James Webb Space Telescope is providing us with remarkable photos that are assisting us in unraveling enormous mysteries of the cosmos, and this is just the beginning. What do you anticipate James Webb's next discovery will be? Comment below with your thoughts and let us know.